Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to play with some of the items that I purchased and hauled recently. Some from Shop Masse, some from Wet n Wild. And I created this green look for you guys. I hope you guys like this look. But before we get started, my name is Alejandra and on this channel, I bring you products that solve any beauty concerns or simplify your beauty routine. So if you are a product junkie just like me, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my future videos. And without further ado, let's get started with the video. So I'm going to go ahead and put this facial mist all over my skin just to rehydrate it. Alright, I'm going to take the AOA primer. This is their mattifying primer. You can get this at Shop Miss A. I'm just going to put it in the dry, I mean in the oily parts of my face. So the reason I'm putting it on first is because it does work well, but I, for some reason if I put it right before applying foundation, it tends to take a little bit longer to dry. So I'm just putting it on first, I'm going to do my eyes, and then by the time I'm ready to put my foundation on, it'll be good to go. To prime my eyes, I'm going to use their, um, what is this? This is the Santee, it's supposed to be a concealer foundation, but I'm going to use it as my eye base primer. Um, you can also get this at Shop Missé. I'm gonna go into the Wet n Wild Nata Basic Peach. I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild P65 brush. This is their setting brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use this shade up here. And then set that. I'm gonna do a green look today. I'm gonna use their Comfort Zone palette. And it's so nice that um, these palettes have transition shades. So I'm going to use this shade up here. Wow, that has a lot of fallout. That is a lot of fallout, but we'll see how it applies onto the skin. And it does blend out nicely. Doesn't look patchy. So I'm using this shade as a transition shade, putting it slightly above the crease. Okay, so I'm going to take the bottom transition shade and I'm going to use that same brush. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit on a paper towel and I'm going to dip my brush in that one. This, is, this one's not as... doesn't have a lot of fallout. Nice color payoff, very nice. And so far it's easy to blend out. I'm gonna extend that color slightly out of the eye into like the outer corner, just making a slight cat eye. I'm gonna get you guys a little closer. That's better. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna take this color right here. I'm gonna try and put it with my finger. That's better. I'm sure if you wet this shadow, you'll be able to see it even more. So I started with my middle finger, placed that color, and then I'm, not, I'm taking my ring finger that has no extra product and just kind of blending that out. So middle finger to apply the product and then taking this ring finger and just blending it upward towards the transition shade that we just put earlier. I'm going to take this color right here. It's the color next to above the transition shade. It's like a mauve shimmer shade and taking the same brush I'm going to dip it in here and even though it's shimmer I'm it's pretty dark. I'm hoping that we can use it to darken this area a little bit. The shimmer doesn't look like it's going to be too... Ooh, that's nice. It seems to have more pigment than actual shimmer, so that's actually nice to use. 
I'm gonna clean up my brush after applying that shade right there and I'm gonna blend it out a little bit. Just kinda blend it out a little. Nice, that shade seems to be pretty pigmented. It doesn't look like the shade on the pan. I'm sure if you were to put it all over your lid, it'll probably be a little more true to color. But since I'm only using it for the outer corner, you can't really tell that it's like a purpley cranberry shade. But it's nice to have something this dark to play with within this palette so that you can create a full look. And this brush is really nice because you can pack color on but it's fluffy enough to still blend out colors as long as I clean the brush and get kind of get rid of some excess product I've been able to blend out the color I took the darker color that's on the pan and on my ring finger and I just placed it on the outer corner and I'm gonna blend that out and that looks pretty so I'm gonna take this fluffy brush and I'm just gonna blend this in The ring finger will just allow you guys to place the product easier into the outer corner because it's a smaller finger. And then I'm taking this brush again and just blending, blending it in, kind of marrying that color within the rest of the shades. Now I'm going to wet my ring finger with the facial mist and then I'm just going to dip my finger into this green shade one more time just to intensify the lid space that we have left kind of blending it in that's pretty that's very pretty I'm gonna go back into this transition shade I'm gonna place that color um, right around this area just to frame this whole look using this brush from Wet n Wild. I think this is their fluffy like blending crease brush. And right around here. And then you can bring it down a little bit. Right Alright, let's go ahead and put eyeliner. I'm going to use my L'Oreal eyeliner. I'm going to use the Wet n Wild eyeliner brush that I just bought. Let's see how this works. So I'm just dipping the brush into the eyeliner. I'm using the cap of the liner to flatten out the product onto my brush. And I'm going to get a little closer to the mirror. Ooh, this is easy. Very nice. Establishing that wing, bringing it down. If you mess up or if it's not as crisp, we clean it up. Don't worry about it. Leave it alone until you're done and then you look at it as a whole and see what you need to fix. Stylish that wing. This one looks like the line needs to be cleaned up because it's kind of coming down at the very bottom. But when you clean it, it fixes it right away. So now that my primer is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put the foundation on. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Juno sponge without wetting it. and it just gives you more of a fuller coverage. I'm 
gonna do the half my face with the sponge and then I'm gonna do the rest of my face with this one just so I can test that out too because that's also new to me I haven't used that brush so just wanted to show you guys the Juno sponge dry and how it gives you really nice coverage all right, going into my foundation with this brush, I'm just gonna put a little bit on the brush and apply that. Sometimes I feel like this foundation looks a little pink on me, but then once it oxidizes, I feel like it looks okay. So this brush is, Applying the foundation okay, but it feels like it should be a little bit more dense for what it does. Usually foundation brushes tend to be a little bit more tightly packed and this one I feel like is a little too flimsy if that makes, if that's the word I should use. So I feel like it takes a little bit longer to buff up that foundation because of it being a little too not dense. So I actually like how the Juno sponge looks, makes my foundation look a little bit better than the brush. So I want a little bit more coverage on this little friend right here and then right over here. So I'm going to see how the, the Juno sponge covers that just to see if it gives me more, more coverage. And I believe it does. What? A little bit more here. I'm gonna do my under eyes with this Ulta concealer in the shade medium and then just apply a little bit underneath my eyes. Let's not be carried away. And this one is damp. I'm gonna take the AOA Studio Banana Powder, taking the setting brush from the Wet n Wild line. I'm gonna use the powder brush from that Wet n Wild, Wet n Wild line, and I'm gonna use the same banana powder just to set the rest of my face. I'm not gonna bronze today. I am though gonna use this blush that I haven't used on camera. This is also from Shop Masse. This is the Malibu Glitz blush in um what is this i think it's enchanted orchid and i'm just gonna use my brush that i usually use this is a darker blush it looks kind of scary when you first look at it since it has that bronzy color it's really nice because you don't have to just blush here but you can kind of like bronze your face with it and it just it looks it, i've been using it and i, I love it A little bit here and then you can extend it up a little bit up here and it just makes your skin look really nice the color I believe is a good color for bronze and blush like if you don't want to do both just use this color to highlight I am gonna go in with the golden flower crown from um, wet n wild so this is a yellowy and a golden highlight. Oh, that's oh, I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Starry Mascara from Chat Masse. And then I'm gonna go in with the Wet n Wild, what is this, their Mega Skinny Mascara. I'm gonna line my lips with the Wet n Wild uh, Gel Lip Liner. This isn't anything new, but I do like this color. I'm just gonna do a nude lip. And then I'm gonna go in with the Buxom Full On Lip Cream. This is in the color Dolly. I 
Oh, something I forgot to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the same highlighter that we used on our face. I am going to put a little bit on the inner corners of my eyes right around here just to illuminate that area. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial using some of the items that I purchased and hauled recently. Thank you guys for watching and if you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos and I will see you next time. Bye!